Yeah, we're still waiting um, for Stefan Ostakio's arrival. Um, for medical reasons, uh, he'll be day by day. So we're just waiting to see uh, if he'll be cleared to, to come in. Uh, we're hopeful we could see him at any time. Um, and Jason Lutweiler, he'll meet us in Honduras. He's, uh, he's actually there waiting for us now. So we will have a, you know, nearly a full squad for the first game. And fingers crossed, maybe a full squad for the first game. Thank you. And Neil, did you have a follow-up? No, I'll let other people ask. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks, Neil. Derek from Post Media. Hey, John, how you doing? <laughs> Good to see you. Hey, Derek. Uh, I just want to ask you about the importance of the depth of the squad when you have three games in such a tight window and you're traveling across the continent. And just how important is it to be able to have uh, you know, that that depth to be able to try and get as many points as you can in this window? Yeah, I think the depth is a, is an important part of this. We experienced the, the two, three game windows in September and October and we had to plan carefully on how to rotate the squad. I think that that window in October was probably the trickiest because we, uh, we, we'd accumulated so many yellow cards and we're on that sort of precipice now where I think we have six players now carrying yellow cards through this period. So, I mean, there's the yellow card factor. I think there's the COVID time bomb that I think all coaches are probably uh, losing some sleep on every night. You know, wondering what message is going to come through from the medical team in the morning. And then you've got the realities of, you know, the preseason players, the MLS players who, you know, some of them haven't played a competitive match since November and, and some haven't even participated in scrimmages yet. So this is um, probably as tricky a window as you're going to, you're going to face and then add the travel to it. But I keep saying this to the group, like, you know, they, they, this is what we're built for. We, we've built those experiences, you know, traveling to Miami uh, or Florida in March to play those matches in the height of COVID where, you know, at that time, COVID was a, a real health risk in many people's minds. And then going to places like Haiti and then coming out of that heading into a Gold Cup, you know, with a, a, a roster that was, you know, many people's eyes very depleted. So... We've had a lot of experiences that, that we've built on here, Derek, and I think those experiences have just created a foundation where we, we can enter these windows with confidence that everyone's committed. Uh, the roster, you, you feel it in the group. That I, I almost feel like the players, when they're here, they know they have to push a next level of performance. So you can trust that people are going to go in and, and find another level. So I think I'm... Um, I'm excited to see what opportunities uh, different players that maybe haven't had opportunities for the last uh, six months and guys you've you know constantly had to have conversations with tough conversations about their playing time and yeah I'm, you know it'd be nice to see these guys that have sacrificed get an opportunity and I think we're excited for that. Just a quick follow. Just what are you expecting out of Honduras? They're a team that's obviously struggled, but that's that's a tough place to go and play and get points. Uh, that just that at the atmosphere in that stadium. Yeah, and, and I think we're we're relishing that opportunity. The you know that we've seen all the, yeah, the 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 previous experiences of the national team, and you know there's no denying that, that it's uh, it's a place where if 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 you don't get excited for it you know, could really consume the mentality of the players. So for us, we, we, we had a, a mentality of going into the Azteca and, you know, we've, we've built a, a similar frame of mind for here, you know, that's really going in to be tested and, and, and looking forward to being tested by the crowd, by, you know, the Honduran team that are really fighting for their World Cup survival and, just everything that comes at us. You know, we've spoke about these things a lot. Um, and I think, like I say, we dealt with some of this in Haiti, some some really interesting things that were going on behind the scenes that probably the public and media would, would never have been aware of. But, you know, these are the things that we'll be able to tell great stories. But at the end of the day, 
this group are clear. They, they've got a clear purpose. No matter what is going to get thrown at us, I know that they're as committed to getting a result as any team I've ever worked with. So, you know, I think we're going in there with the right mentality and, you know, with the right spirit. John, appreciate it. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you, Derek. Thank you very much. We'll go with Joshua Pope next. Thanks, Richard. Hey, John, just curious. Hey. Um, I'm just curious if you can kind of shed some light on what you're excited to do tactically with Alfonso out of the squad. Well, I think um, we had some experiences in the uh, in the first round, the El Salvador game, and I, and I've got so many talented players. I mean, I think that's that, that's always the hardest thing in that forward line. You know, you, you always look at Alfonso, and he's got that flexibility of playing a wing back or in the forward line. But I know at home the fans always enjoy seeing him in that in that front line and, and he relishes that opportunity as well as being that type of player. So, you know, in moments, people like Junior Hoylitz had to sit out. You know, I think Tejon Buchanan, you know, has had to move at times into wing-back roles. Uh, it's been difficult to get Sam Adekube, Richie Larry are both on the pitch at the same time. So, I, I think it does, E.K. Boo coming into the squad, you know, he was quite fresh coming in in November and just seeing how everything... Uh, fitted together and where he fitted in our culture and in our structures. Liam Miller, who's in some good form and, and showed against Costa Rica for 60 minutes that he's been growing with his time in Europe. So I think we've got a lot of players who are hungry, really hungry, Josh, to, to have that opportunity and to take that limelight. And I also think with Alfonso, I think in the last two matches, you know, teams tactically have, have been able to, um, put a lot of attention on him and, you know, nullify elements of, of what he, what he's able to do for us. So, you know, in, in some ways it's always a curse and then in other ways it's a gift. And, you know, as a, as a coach, I've just got to look at the glass half full. I mean, we all want to see the kid come back to health. I mean, uh, I think everyone was devastated when they got the news. Um, nobody more than me, just more from a personal level because he brings, such an infectious spirit to the group. Uh, you, you know when Fonzie's here. So we'll miss that. And, and then obviously we'll miss what, you know, what threat he brings on the pitch. Very quick follow. Uh, for a lot of your players, these trips to, to Honduras and El Salvador will be their first. Have you gotten a sense of what Milan and, and what Atiba have kind of shared with the group about the realities of, of playing there? I, I don't think they've, they've, they've given that amount of focus i mean the leadership group you know came together on the first day and we really explored you know we know what our mission is our mission is to, to qualify you know our mission is hopefully to qualify first our mission is to to win a game against honduras and then that group they work back from that you know they look at all the the pitfalls and the opportunities in the terrain that, that that's going to be in front of us and yeah they've talked about Things can happen at the hotel, but I think one of the, the, the elements that they've, they've outlined is they have so much belief in the resilience and the spirit of this group. And they've been able to go back to those moments in Haiti, you know, where, you know, the team were wobbling, we were on the ropes. And as I say, I think a bit of a mantra is we'll bend, but, you know, we won't be broken. And, and, and that's, that's definitely been a strong message from the leadership group. So, I, I, I've liked what they've done, Josh. They, they've been really clear to focus on, number one, the preparation, making sure that tactically everyone's on the right page because we've been off for two months. Then number two, bringing the group back together, you know, having that time to enjoy each other. And then the third thing is just that relentless fight and, and making sure that every training session, that bite was there. So they've, they've looked at the process and... Uh, and not that they're avoiding the elephant in the room that this is going to be tough. I think it's one of them. You know it's going to be tough, but we've been in uh, some tough environments. And again, we've sort of been, but we, we haven't broken. Thanks, John. Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll go with John Molinaro for CBC, followed by Laurel Armstrong from the Toronto Star, please. Thanks, Richard. Hi, John. Good to see you. Thanks as always. Hey, John. 
Thanks for speaking to us. Uh, just regarding Honduras, from a tactical perspective, what are you expecting from them tomorrow? What kind of tactical proposition do the Hondurans pose? Yeah, it's going to be an interesting one. They, um, under the new coach, there wasn't a massive identity shift because he didn't have a great amount of time to work with them in those windows. But what, you, what you've got to see with Honduras, they're, they're a different proposition at home to what they are aware that they have the third highest XG behind Canada and Mexico at home, which, you know, lets you know that they, they produce quality chances in, in their matches. And when you go back, you, you can actually say they've been unlucky in some games. They've had some real good moments. And then you look at, you know, the average 17 shots at home and, and they've played good teams at home. And then finally, they've got the best statistics in transition in the whole of CONCACAF. Um, and that, that is their, you know, their transitional shots, as well as the quality of the shots they produce from transition. So, you know, the story is very clear that they're a very strong transitional team with the likes of Kyoto, Elise, Lozano, you know, that ability to, you know, threaten your back line. Uh, within one or two passes, if you just go and have a look at the last sort of five goals you, they've scored, you know there's there's a, a clear trend from them, and I think that's that, that's the biggest threat as a starting point. And then, you know, you listen to them in the media, the players, and they're talking about this is it, this is their their last chance, one to to gain respect from their fans, and and two to keep their World Cup dream alive. So, it's going to be a hell of a fight. I think you know tactically. There's an element that's going to be important, but you know the battle, the fight. I think that's that's going to be front and center for at least the first 20 minutes. That if we're not up for that, we'll get overrun with number one, the Hondurans' power and, and quality, and then number two, the the fans that will follow them. So for us, I think tactically, it's we, we've got to be sound. We've got to be defensively sound. We've got to manage the transition, and then play with no fear. You know, we've seen that their, their Achilles heel at home has been, you know, they've they've conceded goals. They've been two up. They've been ahead against the US and conceded late. They've been two goals up against Panama and then lost the game in the last 25 minutes. So for us, it's, you know, believing that we can score, knowing that, you know, you might not win the game in the first 10 minutes. It might be the last 10 minutes, but we have to stay in the fight and believing that, you know, at any moment we can win this match. And I think just lastly, I mean, Albert Alice, I mean, he's been identified as, you know, one of the top 12 strikers in form in Europe at the moment. Um, he is a real handful. And Lozano has just found form in, in La Liga after coming back from his injury. And we all know about Kyoto, um, you know, an absolute, you know, weapon uh, in many ways. So, you know, if those front three play, you know, that's, uh, that's a handful for any team. But again, you know, we have to keep looking at our past and, and being able to, you know, draw confidence from being able to manage the likes of Lozano and Jimenez and Pulisic in, in previous games. So it's going to be a tough night, John. Um, it's going to be a real tough night for Canada. But I think, like I say, the mentality is we're ready for a tough night. And we'll uh, we'll push all the way to get the three points. Thanks, John. Appreciate the in-depth answer and uh, safe travels. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take two more questions before we jump on our broadcast call. Uh, Laura Armstrong followed by Dan King, please. Hey, John. Thanks very much for taking the time. Um, I'm wondering over the course of this first eight games, do you think that obviously there are some uh, sort of peculiarities about playing in CONCACAF in particular. Do you think your team has gotten better at managing that aspect of playing in this region and sort of the uniqueness of it? Well, I think <laughs> the reality is this is, I think this is the first real taste of, of coming in uh, the Central American region. I mean, you go to Mexico, you're playing in the Azteca and yes, there's altitude and yes, there, there are factors there around them scouting you and not being able to actually run any real tactical work while you're in there. So, so those factors uh, are all real, but you're on a beautiful pitch. Um, 
you, you, the players, it's, it's not too familiar from what they're used to at the, at the pro clubs they work at. So now we're coming into those, those environments a bit like Haiti where you know the pitch is going to be an issue. We, we faced that in Jamaica. The first 10 minutes, it was nice, and then it starts cutting up. And, and then it, it has a, an impact on the style of play. And if you don't adapt quickly your style, then, then you get punished. And I think there were some learnings out of that Jamaica game. You know, we, we continued with a, a certain style where I felt we needed to be more direct. And I think these learnings all, all help. I, I think all the coaches, all the players are in the same boat, Laura. We, we're going into different environments and, and picking up little, little things that you'll say, right, we need to do that differently coming in, given that it's a similar condition to Jamaica. There's heat, there's humidity, it'll be sticky. The pitch will be slow. The, the pitch will be, you know, thick grass and heavy and it's going to cut up. So, you know, even with my selections, I've got to think about those players that can manage, you know, technically uh, the type of pressure from Honduras and then, you know, how the pitch will play. So a lot of factors that are coming in. And, and again, I feel like this, this experience, the El Salvador and Honduras is going to be our real first taste of, uh, of CONCACAF in many ways.